Welcome, sisters and brothers. Welcome, friends. Welcome, church, to this Sunday service. Come, all you people, wandering and lost, far from home. Come to the shepherd, the one who guides us, the one who remakes us, and the one who will bring us to safety. Listen, the shepherd is calling. Listen, the shepherd is searching for you. Listen, he is calling you by name. Let us pray. God, our shepherd, you gather us into your kingdom and into your loving arms. You seek us out when we are lost. You rescue us when we are in trouble. You welcome us when we return home. Make us, your church, your people, into a sanctuary for all who are fearful, a place of healing for those who are broken, and a welcoming home for all who seek it. Amen. Let's sing, Great is the Lord and Most Worthy of Praise. Sing in the faith number 50. is the Lord and most worthy of praise, the city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the whole earth. Great is the You've done in their lives, 
Let us pray, confessing our sins. Lord, you walk with us through all kinds of terrains in life. Mountains, molehills, valleys, cliff tops, deserts, woods, town centers, playing fields. When the going gets tough and life takes on a dark hue, black, blue, we sometimes attempt to push through it on our own, only to find ourselves weighed down and getting nowhere fast. We may despair of ever being rid of our burdens and seeing life in color again. Forgive us for these times, for not resting in you, for not trusting in the light of your promises, for not persevering in faith. Merciful Lord, forgive us, we pray. When things are going well and we are galloping on enjoying life in colorful detail, yellow, crimson, we often take you and others for, for granted. Forgive us for not being more aware and appreciative of your company, for not recognizing or acknowledging your blessings and guidance. Forgive us our self-absorption. Merciful Lord, forgive us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Let us sing, Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. I let temptation walk right in. And now I need your grace again. Forgive me, Father. Pray. 
that goes against your kingdom come. Oh, may my will and yours be one, my heavenly Father. The Lord is our shepherd, who restores our soul. He washes us clean and anoints us with the oil of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We are supposed to read the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. But instead of reading it literally, we are going to be told the story of Tabitha, Dorcas, that uh, comes from this short animated film. So let's watch it and be blessed. Hello kids! Today I'm going to tell you a story about a woman named Dorcas. Jesus' followers were often gifted with special abilities through the power of the Holy Spirit. This happened quite a few times to Peter. Once, Peter was called to a town named Joppa, where a very kind woman named Dorcas lived. She was always helping others and showing kindness to everyone around her. She was extremely helpful towards the poor. For her helpful and kind nature, everyone in Joppa loved her. One day, Dorcas fell very ill. Her friends tried to do everything to make her feel better and comfortable. But nothing worked, and Dorcas died. Her friends were heartbroken. They put special oils and perfumes on her body before her burial. They put her body in a room upstairs for her funeral. A few of Dorcas's friends brought news that Peter, Jesus' disciple, was in the neighboring town. So they sent two men to talk to Peter and beg him to come to Joppa as quickly as possible. So Peter went to Joppa with the two men and Dorcas's friends took him to the room where her body was kept. Peter saw that the room was filled with her friends, widows and poor people who were all crying for her. They showed Peter the coats and the other pieces of clothing that Dorcas had sewed for them. Peter asked all the people to leave the room. Then he knelt down beside Dorcas's body and prayed. After that, he turned to her and said, Get up! Immediately, Dorcas opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. Peter then called back her friends back into the room and showed them that Dorcas was alive. Everyone was amazed. The news of Dorcas being alive spread quickly through the town, and soon many people began to believe in Jesus once again. Today's Gospel reading comes from John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. Then came the feast of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the word 
of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Blessed Lord, who has offered the Holy Scriptures for our learning, 
Grant that we may hear, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of abundant life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus says, My Father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. On the Gospel passage read today, Jesus compares himself to a shepherd, meaning that he identifies himself as a worker. He doesn't compare himself to an emperor, for instance. Work is the transformation of nature, of the environment, by a deliberate action of the human being, an action that takes us back to God's creative work. On May the 1st, several countries celebrated Workers' Day. How did this commemoration come about? And this is the history of International Workers' Day. In May 1886, 400,000 workers in many parts of the USA went on strike, demanding an eight-hour working day. The strike started peacefully, but on the third day of protests in Chicago, there was some violence. The police shot at unarmed workers, killing several of them. The next day, there were more protests and someone threw a bomb. Seven police officers and four workers were killed by the bomb or police shooting just after the bomb. The person who threw the bomb was never identified, but eight workers were arrested. Seven of them were sentenced to death and One of them was sent to prison for 15 years. This event, known as the Haymarket Affair, was very important in bringing working people together in the USA. Many people didn't believe the men were guilty, and the trial was criticized for being unfair. The Haymarket Affair became an international symbol of the struggle for workers' rights, and May 1st was chosen to be International Workers' Day. On this day, many socialist parties and trade unions called for workers to demonstrate for the eight-hour day and in favor of peaceful protest. The eight-hour working day became law for public workers in 1892 in the USA. Since then, workers' movements all over the world have continued to fight for and win this right. Therefore, celebrating International Workers' Day is necessary to campaign for decent work, fair pay, respect for fundamental rights and protection. Unfortunately, in recent years, this respect for what had been won by workers' struggles in the 19th and 20th centuries has been the rule. Since the 28 or 2008 financial crisis, strange forms of establishing work contracts, such as part-time, short-term, as well as low wages have emerged. What has been called the gig economy has also grown. When companies hire workers for a short period of time to carry out a task of short duration, or when workers are made to think they are entrepreneurs, as happens with drivers of apps like Uber, 
when in fact they are the only ones at risk for having to own a car, for having to own a car, pay for fuel, for compulsory insurance, devote long periods of time to driving around the city while the company gets the profit and does not have to pay any labor obligations to the driver. The speed of change in the world is very great in everything human beings do. Perhaps the speed with which human relationships are degrading will also cause us to lose the notion of solidarity very quickly. Love, love is cooling out of hearts very quickly, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. Because iniquity will be multiplied, the love of many will grow cold. I make this reference to International Workers' Day because it was celebrated on the previous Sunday, but also because the world of the early church was mainly made up of people who lived by work, like the people we meet in the passage from the Acts of the Apostles. Tabitha was the Aramaic name of that devoted servant whose Greek name was Dorcas, meaning gazelle. She was an important worker in the church in Joppa, as well as in the whole community of that city on the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. She worked with fabric, was very generous and symbolically, no doubt, the th threads that bound her to the community were strong. So they suffered when illness and death came upon her. They sent messengers to Peter the Apostle asking no, nothing in particular except that he should come quickly to that town, even though they knew Tabitha was dead. They had already washed her body. They placed her body in the upper room and waited for Peter to come. Even though they had some hope that the course of that story would be changed, they did not translate that hope into words. They did not know how to say what they expected. Peter came and asked everyone to leave the room where Tab Tabitha's body was and prayed. Only God knows the words Peter used and what he asked for in prayer. He may have prayed that the threads of that beautiful social tapestry would remain connected. Perhaps he prayed, as we often do, resigning himself that what we call the Lord's will would be done. Or perhaps he remembered the day when Jesus said to a late little girl, Talita Kumi, stand up, little girl. Peter boldly spoke, stand up, Tabitha. And she stood up and, who knows, was already thinking about the scenes that were pending while everyone rejoiced at her return to life. Peter the fisherman, in turn, went to look for a friend he had not seen for a long time, Simon the tanner. Two men of work, two workers capable of altering nature through human action by collecting living beings, 
that inhabit the waters or through human action on the remaining skin of an animal whose life has been taken away. Despite knowing the human capacity to change nature, to make transformation in nature, they were also men who recognized that we live before mysteries inaccessible to the understanding of our intelligence, unexpected changes of the natural order that we call miracles. At this point, I draw your attention to the dialogue between the, the cartoon characters Charlie Brown and his dog Snoopy, in which Charlie Brown says that one day we will all die. To which Snoopy replies, true, but on all the other days we will not. I am also reminded of the good-humored saying, live each day as if it were your last. One day you will get it right. Have you ever thought about what you would do if you knew this was going to be the last day of your life? What would you do on this last day of your life? Let us remember that all the days God gives us are days to live, not days to stop living, even if the last enemy to be defeated is circling around us. Jesus Christ, our shepherd, watches over his sheep and doesn't leave us helpless. I'm not Jesus Christ, nor am I Peter, but I hold out my hand to invite you. Young lady, get up. Young man, get up. Young adult, get up. Elderly, get up. Live and let the light of Christ shine through your life. Following the example of Tabitha Dorcas, let us be sewers of good relationships among people. Let us help the world to be clothed with peace, health, dignity at work, prosperity for all humanity. May we be faithful servants of the Lord who continues to work in the world through our words and actions. Amen.
Let's offer our prayers of intercession. Hear our prayer, O God, as we hear your call. If only the world heard your voice as clearly as Paul and recognized its truth and sharply. But as we do, and they have not, grant us the strength to be your voice in this world. So we pray for this world, so much violence and no solution. So much that has been done rightly or wrongly, and a fear and panic that no solution can be found. So for those who find prejudice a way of life, we pray. For those who are trapped and caught up, we pray. For those who have been displaced, we pray. And for those living with and making decisions, we pray. Hear us for all forms of prejudice. For folk who physically and emotionally build walls, we pray. For those who live with an extreme view of religion, for those who are self-interested, we pray. And for those who live a life beyond what is dehumanizing, we pray. Hear us for ourselves. For those who are our family and friends, we pray. Those who we know are ill and those recovering. Those who are lonely, anxious, confused, stressed, we pray. And for those who bring color back to life, we pray. Hear us as we pray, like Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let's offer our closing prayer. God of all our coming in and our going out, of our past, present, and our future, of all the ups and downs of life, give us bright hope that all shall be well. Help us to trust in your promises, to find the springs of water of life, and to share that with others that tears may be wiped from every eye. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Have you all a glorious week.